Hello everybody, welcome to Planet Sky FF, the world where everything revolves around £50,000. My name's Serge. And my name is James. For the first time ever, we are recording our investor opportunity meeting <laughs> live, <laughs> James. We have these regularly and uh, you know how it is. Fantasy sports is growing, James. Yep. The uh, YouTube community is getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. There's this couple of guys in North London that have this awesome Sky Fantasy Football FPL channel. No. And this time next year, we'll be millionaires, James. Yeah, okay. You only get £50,000 for winning it. So. Oh, mate. Unless James. someone at Sky decides to change the fund, you know, please. But we ain't winning it anyway, so what difference no, does it make? That's true. Uh, do you want to introduce our guests? Yes, I suppose I shall. We are very blessed today to be joined by two genuine fantasy football legends from Fantasy Football Hub, the free-for-one Sky Fantasy Football podcast. Let me firstly introduce you to... Sun Dream Team winner of the 2021-22 season, Andrew Ferguson. How are you, Andrew? I'm really good, thank you, buddy. Why am I calling you Andrew? It's Fergie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Fergie. Only my only my mother call, calls me Andrew nowadays. Just just that, so you know. So, uh, yeah, Fergie. Mom, what are you calling me that for? She's like Andrew. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thanks for having us on, guys. Absolutely amazing. Massive, massive fans for years and years and years. And uh, James, personally, you've been a uh, podcast inspiration of mine over the years as well so just wanted to such hasn't as well. nah. so, so it's ab- <laughs> nah. absolutely has not been any kind of inspiration but James you absolutely have. On that side yeah. of the table. Exactly. thank you mate uh, but Fergie's upstage today by his partner in crime let me introduce you to the man who finished 10th in Sky Fantasy Football this season it's Paul McNulty how are you Paul? <laughs> <laughs> yeah a bit rough this morning but yeah, yeah thanks for having me on guys uh, for those who live under a rock Paul did finish 10th in Sky Fantasy Football but he also finished First, congratulations, Paul. Thanks very much, mate. Yeah. How are you feeling? Still a bit, yeah, still a bit surreal. Like, uh, it was a bit, uh, a bit nervous, an understatement yesterday, but um, yeah, just happy to come out on top. How's that day? Because in our community, a, a lot of our patrons were talking about you and wanting you to win it and stuff. And the reaction to the last show that you guys did was like, how the fuck is he so calm? Like, why is he not like sweating buckets? <laughs> um, I, I genuinely felt like that. And I wasn't uh, like... I've not been sleeping particularly well recently. <laughs> yeah. um, but and that's I, not the 11-month-old. Uh, no, and that's not the 11-month-old. Uh, my, my girlfriend's very uh, accommodating on that front and I don't need to get up with her. But um, no, I, I genuinely felt calm in that I, well, I used my last, not that this was known, but I used my last transfer like three weeks ago. So I've, oh, I've, not, wow. so I've okay. not really had, other than captaincies, and yesterday was a big, big decision. But other than that, I've not really had much decision-making. So I was in the, already in the frame of, what will be will be type situation. So I was quite, I was quite, I was, I'm, I've been happy with how I've played this year. I've not got any regrets really. So if someone beat me and picked me at the post at the end, then, then, then so be it. I, was, I, I suppose having used it, you're out of power, aren't you? So yep. there's no point Does worrying worry about, about it. Bar the, out of your bar the cat seat. Yeah. No, but I, f- I think probably like, I mean, I don't know what you had from say United Chelsea the other night. Rashford, <laughs> yeah. So, so I've got, sto- got, got a choice, story. Right? So I've got a story about this. Go on. <laughs> well, I went into that game with Rashford as my only cover, and um, and I knew the guy in second. I was ca- catching because the leaderboard's active now, and you can yeah. see like intra game updates, so I could work out what the teams around me were, and I had it written down what players I had and what what they had. And and the guy in second, John Donnelly, had uh, brought in someone to begin with, and I was thinking, right, it's either Shaw or De Gea make the, De Gea make the most sense, knowing what his team was and who he was going to take out. Um, so. And then when they got saves bonus, he jumped up four points. So it was obviously he had him. And then the Felix goal in the last ten minutes, and then the Rashford yeah, goal, and he didn't own, and he didn't own Rashford. So in the last ten minutes on Thursday, a thirty-two point swing. Wow! So I was like twenty odd points behind, and probably dead at that point. I think based on I knew what his team was. His team was marginally better than mine going into the last uh, the last game day as well. Like he had Trent and I had Canati. Like what vast difference in in Sky for outputs for those two players and a Tottenham player won it for you right did yeah and that, like I was very close so so I was on Haaland all week sorry I'm going off on tangents now I'll work away uh, I was um I was all set on Haaland all week I spoke to my I spoke to my missus as well and said what should I do what should I do oh yeah I was like, I was in, like in the and she's like well Haaland's the new it's Salah anyway so you might as well captain him that was her response like she picks up little bits from watching the games when so I'm watching. What them. you were trying to do here was put it on her if you didn't win <laughs> the money, right? <laughs> you told you me. You said. Well, it's not. It's the opposite. When she's like, when Son had the brilliant season last year and I didn't own him in any format for long periods, um, she was like, 
well, Son always scores and he's always smiling. Why, why do you not bring him in? I didn't want that situation to come up again. So, um, no, uh, so I was on Haaland all week and then um, I looked at the odds for any time scorer. Take the decision out of my hand, please. Went on the sky bet, both five to six to score any time. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I just... Uh, I was chatting with Dan Cox we were playing pool downstairs and um, yeah, I was like who, who would you go for Kane and I was like I've, I've, I was thinking Kane anyway myself um, and now having that conversation brings out what you want you know in that coin flip this is when you flip a coin you're like oh no I'm going to do best at th best two out of three now because the first flip doesn't land the way you want to do it and that's what brings out the, the thought so um, yeah but when when kickoffs uh, happened I this is terrible etiquette for me I didn't realise that in game I couldn't make my team public because I would have done it, but you had to do it before the before the kickoff. I think in Sky. Oh, is it? I think so. Okay. Well, I tried to I tried to do it on my phone and I couldn't, and the teams in second and third did. So poor etiquette from me. But um, is that I, the dumb thing? Is it? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Especially when you're when, especially when things are so close and it, it's been like in the I had my team around December time when I noticed a lot of people were trying to copy yeah, me. No one's and, noticed uh, that I haven't made mine. <laughs> you know, they were they were trying to uh, <laughs> steal my transfer ideas. But I, had, I think I only had about four players yesterday. So. But I hadn't, seen, I hadn't seen that they were open until Kane had already scored. So I went to check the leaderboard and then saw that they had open teams and they'd both captured Salah at that point. So it was... Uh, a big, Do you think big, they're big sitting home going that wanker didn't even open his team? We can't yeah, even well, see what he's I don't know. I, I, I'd probably be thinking that. Like, it's, yeah, it's like pure, pure etiquette. I don't, but but I, I, didn't, I didn't do it on purpose. Um, I'm interested to know uh, how it worked between you guys when you were... Because you were second, Fergie, right? I was third. Finished forty third in the end. Yeah, yeah. It was a great yeah, season yeah. as well. But at one point you were one, two, three, li yeah, a literal yeah. three for one. A couple of months ago, stop talking yeah. to each other, or were you starting to lie to each other? No, I, I think the we, you know, we we kind of knew very we we're very open with each other about the fact that we don't share our teams with each other in terms of we actually actively talk about that because um, we are competing against each other, but also, also we don't want to like. Um, pair or influence each other either so we knew we had probably eight players the same seven or eight the same and then um i had a couple of different players from paul and we both knew that but we're both very open about like not sharing it because you, you guys know. have been putting together for what three years four years yeah i think this yeah, is our like I, I feel like fourth season i i I know what James is like. I think you probably know what I'm like a little bit now as well. You can kind of get, 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 get an idea <laughs> for... Or when deadlines come yeah. round. James will, what you're every like. week he'll try and push a little bit of Zaha or a little bit of Sun. Yeah. I know I know what his vices are, you know. No, but like, you kind of get a feel for... You do, you do. But, but uh, when you talk so often, very, right? Very un -pull, like transfers this year as well. So he did, he has thrown me a couple of times because I'm sure he'll talk about it a little bit now, but Callum Wilson is the most un -pull, like transfer you'll, you'll, you'll ever make. And that's what ended up winning them it ultimately. So uh, I think that we were talking a little bit like at the start of the season and even, and even in season. And I remember we had a very honest chat at, at some point about a year ago, didn't we? About, I think we were pissed and we were saying, Paul, what's the one thing which I would change about your game? <laughs> <laughs> and vice versa. But the thing I said to Paul was, I think um, when he pulls within striking distance, I sometimes think he's sometimes a little bit too reserved still to actually go on and win it. Like he came 30th last year. Yeah, uh, which is an amazing, amazing finish. But he was never in the hunt of actually winning it. So you need to make those real sort of gamble transfers, and he did that this year. And you know, not for one minute taking <laughs> taking any credit for that at all. What what, what though, those like you brought in Martinelli uh, when you probably shouldn't have, yeah. and you brought in Wilson and those other ones. So they're the ones that kind of won him in. And I had no idea he was doing these moves either. So, but in terms sorry, in terms of the question, we had no real idea, and we were playing very very separately. We're very competitive against each other as well. We're in all different leagues against each other yeah, yeah. as well. So uh, Obviously, you've cleaned up all your mini leagues as well. Yeah, I didn't play that many. I didn't play the other many. Well, you well did. Sky put me off because they had put a deadline for joining. It was a weird date because it, was, like, it wasn't the last day of the month. It was the day before the last day. I think it was like 30th of October rather than 31st of October. And, uh, and then I was nervous about was I still able to join them on the 31st? So I, I dipped my toe and I joined a couple on the 31st thinking, oh, mate, not be allowed or kicked out or whatever and it, it retained so and people yeah. can't wait to have me and Sudge in their mini leagues well yeah, yeah. <laughs> free money let's see basically but I, I remember probably I'd say about a month ago I remember you you when you were podding and you were saying Fergie specifically like you were loving this fantasy season like Best it was it was one of the best ever um 
I feel like the, the last two, three weeks, though, because we'd kind of build up to this FPL game weeks 37, yeah. the double in 36 a little bit. Then as soon as City, the title was wrapped up because Arsenal lost to Forest and all the all the double game week players and stuff is now out the window, right? Even in Sky, like, I've got Mitoma, uh, can I, like loads of my Sky players got, didn't even play yesterday. I got, I got Stones and Edison, mate. I've yeah, Stones and Edison the last month. I've had nothing off of it. It drifted out the last two weeks of... We kind of, as as what we'd call engaged managers that are properly looking at the fixtures, trying to plan for the doubles, petered out to a little bit of meh because there was so much rotation that we didn't end up having the gains that we thought we would. Lucky in a few FPL mini leagues, I was ahead a reasonable amount because of 27, 28, 32, that kind of go, those game weeks. But it was, a, it was enjoyable. I don't know if it finished in that way because we didn't get the gains at the end that, that we could have had. Yeah, I agree. I, I just think in terms of the way that the whole season panned out in terms of the overhaul being um, um, over the World Cup. Um, I think that the first overhaul, I understand why Sky do it because they want to give the you know the casual managers having the best start a kind of a, a second chance, keep Reboot. them engaged. I completely yeah. understand that, um, but I think it, it gives it gives everyone who's had a good start. I get it sets them on the back foot. You know th- those engaged managers who put a lot of time and effort into it. It puts them on the back foot because then everyone ends up having the same team as them, which they don't deserve. From a from an engaged view, the second overhaul just completely like kills the game. Again, this this is all like my opinion in terms that every team after second overhaul is basically the same. So yeah, so yeah. again, any any like earned collateral that you've made by putting your team in a really great position is just completely lost because everyone can just get there for free. So I think that the fact that they, they didn't have the first one and that the, the second one was after the World Cup, which obviously was, was perfect because everything changed in terms yeah, of yeah, the yeah. league and injuries and, and all that stuff. Worked out really well. And I, I also really like the 50 transfers only because yeah. I think 40 is, you know, it's kind of averages one a week, right? Which is which is good from the fact that if you want to um, continually manage your team well, but I do think the extra 10 did allow us all a bit, that little bit of freedom and fun to go off on, a couple of puns you normally I, I wouldn't have gone if around from. the table so I'd rather have one overhaul and 50 transfers than Same. two overhauls and 40 transfers Same. I don't know what the rest of you you guys like as you stand up for. 50 transfers and no overhaul yeah but then you're making it that little bit more difficult you want to make it difficult but I think having one overhaul is useful but the thing is when's the timing of that one overhaul like January transfer window do you want to do it? Or you need like an international break of eight, 10 yeah. days. We had a long time with the World Cup, right? The overhaul period was massive. Although I suppose most people actually just look at it in the last seven days. Yeah, I agree with seven Fergie. Days, Dead's the game for a while. Yeah, it does. Because we all came out with similar players or even steaming into City after that period. I, I think I think in fantasy, the whole the whole point of fantasy about what you really, really look for is to get your team in a, in a great position through all your skill and commitment and time you put into it. I think that what that overhaul does, the second one, in, you know, in in particular, it just it just completely kills your collateral and just lets gives everyone else. And again, I understand why they do it, but from a pure, uh, you know, a f- uh, fantasy uh, enthusiast perspective, I don't think people deserve to have that that second chance if you've got your team in a great, you know, position. Great position. But I do understand why why Sky do it, obviously, to keep particularly this year with the World Cup yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. It's it made sense timing wise. I but mean, you know, you know, we don't yeah. know. Next season is going to revert back to normal, right? We'd assume with Sky, they've not said anything they've, otherwise. They've, they've said there's going to be a change, but there's okay. not de- there's not details. Watch this space. But, Come on, they're going to be on to you, Paul. Like. Uh, because they're going to sort out your winning. So ask the cheeky question, you know, it's a little league. Who's not seen that for months? Come on, tell them. <laughs> you know. I think I think just 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 kind of a final sort of um, a point on that. I, th- I think for, for all the years, like I've played fantasy in all the different formats. Yeah. I think this year in Sky, I felt the most in control of my own, own destiny. And I think that that to me is really important with, with lots of other games, you know, like the FPL lockout, an hour and a half before the deadline. You can be screwed before the game week even starts. In other formats, similar thing. But I think with Sky, you're very, very much in control. You know, you have to be disciplined with transfers. You have to take your time on when you make your transfers. But because of the daily interaction, you can you 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 can make a decision off the back of a lineup, or you can make a decision to take someone out on the Saturday, put them on the Sunday, captain the high EO captain, or go for a differential captain. You, I feel you're just massively in control of your own destiny, and your your overall kind of ending almost reflects your performance it does. I, don't, I don't feel that we were talking about Paul, right? so much better now <laughs> <laughs> well, you made your choices right but like, if you Fuck think about it, <laughs> Paul's situation when you're going into the last three weeks 
part of it is why you can't because well you, you made your transfers now so actually the de your destiny is out of your hands but at the same time you're making your daily captaincy decision so it's not out of your hands so even though in the last few weeks there's some things that you can't influence with your decision exactly. like making the captaincy choice is still make or break um, well, if a deadline wasn't at the kickoff of Sky yesterday, Paul would have probably captained Haaland. But as it was, he put the destiny in his own hands to go on and win it by having to choose between Kane and Salah. Yeah. Just, just yeah. Add, like, yeah. okay, I know we had the leak. But if we didn't have a leak, um, you know, it just killed. Look, well, ha Haaland didn't play, was it, last weekend or weekend before? Last and, weekend he didn't play against I, Chelsea. I, yeah. Started and this, against Brighton. Like that. But... It's just completely out of your hands then. And you just it's in the laps of the gods. Whereas yeah. you, know, you do get that, that extra bit of... You know your own. You know if you're setting alarms for captains, like we all do, you deserve that extra bit of. The team leaks kind of annoyed me last weekend because the guy in second brought in Alvarez and captained Alvarez, when he, and he scored in the in the one 0 victory over Chelsea. Whereas if there was no team leaks out, and and even at that point, I think nobody was really sure on the sources that were coming through. And exactly. Like there was a I couple. It was quite good. I captained Alvarez, so you know. You? <laughs> <laughs> it worked out for me. Yeah. I won't tell you what I did. I told you last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still, I, while everyone was coming off Haaland's, I thought, well, I'll stay this time. I did as well. Oh, okay. yeah. I, 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 yeah. did. I did. Did you? We all yeah. did, yeah. I see, I followed the leaders here, so. You know, you put a tweet out asking for questions for the show. Yeah. Like, the three of us may as well not bother because everyone's just basically sent questions in for Paul now. All right, well, let's um, cover some of them. But there's a lot of people. It will, it will spin off. There's a lot of people that um, uh congratulating you so just take it as a given that everyone that sent a question said started it with congratulations paul yep. and well done because they all is have there like no one's put fuck this prick or nothing like that or, uh, or, or how did they ride his luck or the bad etiquette about showing my team yeah, exactly yeah there's gotta be something nah. no 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 uh, good. Good. Nah, if there was i wouldn't it's public it's all on twitter you can see it and you can uh hunt them down uh, so but Benny Blanco says Paul remember when people said you couldn't win the game playing it the way you do yeah. like who said that uh, was it uh, Fergie was, was it Fergie on your show <laughs> we discussed it when Paul the pod with me a few months ago yeah, yeah. saying that we you know we'd said in the part I remember certainly you two discussed it together the idea of this would get you so far but is it and we literally said it last week didn't we like we, now, whether you won it or not, we found out that it could be done doing it your style. But it's interesting listening that you've said there's things that maybe you wouldn't have done in the past, like the Callum Wilson move, for example. So that, there was still that, a little bit, a bit of 50 transfers variance. means there's a couple more like and, well, risky ones. So, 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 so there is that, definitely, for sure. But that team with Callum Wilson, the team that won the game was the team that was second. So when we were first, second and third, I had made one transfer different across the two teams for the course of the season up until about a month ago. And that one transfer had gained me 20 points. So I had the what I had the one transfer in reserve in the second team, but I had the 20 point lead on the first team. And it was a team in second that I brought Wilson in because I was hedging my bets because I brought an I Isaac in, in the first team. So it was actually that team that like that overtook it. So again, you could argue I would never have done that in my first team, I don't think. So your second team won? Yeah. Well, but the team that was in second at that point in time. Was the team that ended up winning, and the, the team in first was the one that dropped. So was that the Brighton team. game you brought Wilson in? No, so I no. brought him in um, again. It was my second last transfer, so I was going a bit aggressive, and it was an Arsenal game on the Sunday. So he blanked, and I immediately regretted bringing in Wilson. I was like, "That's not a me move to do, even though it's the second team. Why have I done that?" Really, like, so I had a week of uh, mourning over <laughs> over it, huh. and then it came up. The Leeds game was the early kickoff on the following Saturday. Newcastle Leeds um, and I was like oh well what I've got to lose now Wilson's really low owned Leeds do concede a lot of chances penalties so I captained Wilson the team and that's it just started that chain reaction from there because then the Brighton game the following midweek where he scored and assisted and got shots born right at the, end. the death and everyone, yeah. and everyone around me yeah. captained Dunk as well um, so yeah it was, uh, so so <laughs> You could argue that it's not the normal style of play that's won with the game, and I've changed that up. But that's interesting. But it's, it's the timing of the pence as well, isn't it? Because yeah. if you if you play like that all season, you won't win. Yeah, like, yeah. You, you nah, well. but, but you put yourself, you you you, you put yourself in a position to get lucky, and yeah. and you and you had a punt, and it, you know you know you know, and it paid off. It you've got to play rock solid to get to that spot. You you won't get to that spot with a decent lot of transfers left. Just taking. I, I think I found that out this season in the first half where I was. Pretty steady, 
I don't a second season playing Sky so I don't really think I'm even that knowledgeable about my own like if someone what, said to you what's your style season I don't four know about <laughs> nah, no way second season proper no way <laughs> You haven't been playing a long, a long time. Nah, not four years. Four season years. four. It can't be four. Yes, bro. <laughs> no way. We've so been just four doing years. it by myself. <laughs> it wasn't the first season. <laughs> not a lot for you, mate. And what in the second season? Not a lot. No. I don't think. Uh, obviously, it doesn't store your historic ranks. I mean, this is the first time where I've, 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 I've missed what maybe six or seven deadline slash captaincies out of 170, which for me is all right. For a lot of regular players, that's too many. But I know now... The game sets your cup. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and the fact that the game sets your cup. I only did that, only did that <laughs> after the overhaul. Or did it do it before? I think it did it before. But it only did it no, if you set your captaincy yeah, yeah. on a player. Was, so if you hadn't got a player from that day, you were screwed. Right. There were right. certain ones you missed, wasn't it? Like Madison's Hall against Forest. Yeah, you didn't I buy anyone in. Brian Raya. There was uh, Salah one day that I wanted to get. Well, it didn't go off. It doesn't matter. But I know for the first half of the season, I like... Steady Eddies, five pointer players, exactly. Rodri's, Palinios, Dunks. I just, yeah, I'd rather pay anywhere between eight and nine and a half, ten million for a five point player than look for ups and downs. I don't know if it was made easy because we could just captain Holland so much this year that we didn't need to um, try and find alternative captaincy ones. But rather than find players that might go off and be explosive, that's not for me. I like five point, six point steady, steady players. Till you get towards the last three, four months, and then not need to hop on, hop off of because th then you just keep them right. They're just yep. steady to, to keep ticking along. I think what maybe helped me and Paul a bit this year as well is the Sky game very much turned into like the Telegraph game, which we've played for a long time. Where where the you know it was only the one overhaul and and, and quite a lot of transfers. And the way to do well at a Telegraph, for anyone who knows that, is that is to literally just hold on to or just just get yourself a, ro a rock solid team. Make as f few transfers as you yeah. possibly can. Injuries you know, you or, injury or maybe a captaincy coverage if you need. Someone's dropped, right? Yeah. But um, I think both of us went into the overhaul. I had, I had, I think I had more. I had, I had like like forty one left, and you had like 30, 38 or thirty nine, um, which was which was which was a lot. Yeah, but I was, I was around hard, forty but it, forty one but it's overhaul. It's so hard. You were fifty, weren't you? Nah, <laughs> you, yeah, you were forty one, forty two. I think so, overhaul after World Cup. It's so 42. hard not to use the transfers, but. Again, through like experience, which you you know we're all kind of um, getting now. Imagine having like five more transfers in the last month, and yeah. then I just look back to the first half of the season and think, oh look, there's a two for one or three for one there. It's not like real of massive benefit. Whereas the transfers now, imagine you could have brought in like two or three players in this last well, month, like Kanate and Isak. And I was thinking more well, I was like, thinking if I brought a Man United, <laughs> player, I would have like, brought a Man United player Trent, first in with a cost me points. But, but like maybe like Trent is a good example of someone. I couldn't get to who I would have. He was so dangerous, right? I would have loved to have gotten yeah. to Trent, or loved to have, you know, even even like Estupina over these last two weeks and players like that. I just couldn't get to. Didn't have enough. I think transfers. Ian Parent said it, didn't he? About three or four weeks ago, is those who went on Konate. I went on Konate a week, and if I'd waited a week later, would I would have, have gone on. Trent. I would have gone on Trent, yeah, and that could yeah. have made a massive difference. But yeah. just didn't wait and just tried to play the extra fixture game. Nunes. Yeah, I well, wonder. I bought Nunes when Liverpool yeah. played Arsenal, didn't I? It was the four thirty. He wasn't even in the team. He's played about half hour since. Didn't yeah. you tell James to pick Nunes when you were on the pod a while ago? I, think I said, I said, I, oh, was, okay. I said if I was gambling okay. and I was that far behind. Darren. Did we invite them or did they invite <laughs> themselves? <laughs> Darren, uh, also a close. Uh, he's asked a question, but I think you've answered it. Would you have captained Harland if yeah, he started? 100%. If he started, I, I, I think a lot you, of people would have. What, I told you that's what I was doing as well. But I think if he started, a lot would have. I don't think. I think that second and third. I went on record on pod to say, and I've, and I've, I think I've been like pretty open on the pods as well this year and not every year. But um, this is how I play the game, and I will continue to play the game this way, and and, and I have done so. Um, but when I was looking at the fixtures with eighteen fixtures to go, and I know how many transfers I've got left, I'm like, I'm captain Holland six or seven games or whatever the, the number of Man City games are. Um, and then I would have more regret than not doing Haaland than... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking it almost, yeah. yeah. The, another, the another way. Like, I often think of moves and, and captaincy calls as, as where, where's my biggest regret? What would... Like, 100%. How <laughs> would I play that? And that's all we thought, yeah, I would have captained. Would have captained. Imagine, like, waking up this morning, having not captain Haaland, and the guy in second third had a captain Haaland, Haaland had gone to bang a hat-trick, and you think... Why have I gone against the best striker in the world? 
He didn't. He captained Harry Kane. Exactly. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> but it's just that thing of like that 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 that. What can you put yourself through emotionally? Like you know, I think I've made a mistake. I've made a mistake, and and that's and that's how and that's how, how how both of us play the game. It's like what what is the thing that will make us not feel the worst? And it's obviously to go with the best forward in the world. Because remember when Haaland played Leicester away a few weeks ago, and people were thinking of going against him, mm. and it's just like you just can't, it was can't five thirty him. kick off. And it was scored. a little bit of a. It was a, it was a little bit of thing where he was going to play or not, yeah. and he ended up. I think he scored two goals the before in about being ten minutes. I think, off yeah. or something, and you know if you hadn't gone hard, if you'd have tried to be a bit too cute, a bit too clever, you was, you, you know all of a sudden you're out of it, and you so uh, well, yeah. You, well, go on, Paul. I, I was just going to say, I, I think you summed up there. Like I've tried to play the game not being too cute and not too clever, and I think that you often your peripheral players in the team rather than who you're going to captaincy can make up the differences and as, as you're picking up the, the five pointers like, like you yeah. mentioned earlier on Sudge or the one move I thought that, that like I brought in Martinelli I've only owned him w- once this season and I brought him in when everyone else was selling him because there was the fears of Trossard coming in and I often th- I thought for a while that oh, that's not unlike me move to make for me but then the more I thought about it the reason that I picked Martinelli was based on data because the next four games were against the four teams that had conceded the most chances or had the biggest uh, XGC since the World Cup, and I was like, and I was more comfortable that that was the right decision, and it was the kind of decision that I would actually make, even though it didn't look like it because everyone was selling him off, and I was getting a low-owned player then, like or much more low, lowly owned than he than he had been anyway. Do you think because you've done obviously so well this year? We'll have a lot more copycats next year. I mean, in terms of your style, so I feel like there's a little bit of a danger next year if if the majority of popular players are underpriced, we're going to get this template again, and it would be nice to have some movement from that. So I, I referenced four players last week, so that I think if if they're all gettable, everyone would probably have subject to the fixtures start of next season. Do you think because you've won it, even more people go? I'm going template. I'm just going to sit this out, not make early transfers, not take early gambles. I think, I think so. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't, I don't know that there's going to be too much of a, too much of a swing. And I've mentioned before, I got, I got luck in a, in a few decisions I made this year as well. Obviously, I think you need that bit of luck as well as, as well as good planning. Um, I, I think that, that this is the onus is on Sky to price the players right to sort that problem out. Like I think that. This year, regardless of how I've played the game or not, or people listening to the content or listening to the pod, is that Lewis Dunk always went under the radar. It's like it, he's always been like, I always loved Romero in, in Sky. I mean, he was always a great asset and always cheap. But Dunk's always been underpriced because even before the Zerbi came in, the, the, like um, in Potter's early time, he was still picking up passing bonus and on, uh, well, frequently. I know Brighton were, were never great for clean sheets, but um, he's always been underpriced. And I think. He would have come to the limelight or, or or the forefront of people's decisions now, and he seems like another template player that has to really be nine and a half million, I think, next year, like nine nine and a half million next year. Most so, passes in the league in the end. Yeah, nice. so so, well, price, so it's all that's despite being on the pace all week. <laughs> <laughs> so it has to be price. So surely the, the price the price over the season top. or yes, just in yesterday. No, 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 I don't think he was drinking all seasons. No, 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 <laughs> the passes for just yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, all players over he all play of the entire season. Been out all week. Yeah, yeah, allegedly. Because Michael um, Harland said, like, three players who would be going into your team next season, regardless of price, apart from Haaland, Kane and Salah. Well, you can't really answer that because you don't know... Dunk. You don't know right, what so the... There's got to be a level. The price and the fixtures do matter because you want to make sure you've got the odd captaincy covered off and, and that kind of thing. So it kind of does matter. But, yeah, it'll be the five-pointers. Like I think Rodri would go... Rodri would be... Top of my mind to be straight in because I just like like the consistency. I think VVD because of the consistency. I think it's these who's who's tier points all the time. Um, you could you could David Raya. I think you could sort that with pricing like with pricing though. You could put Rodri at high nines, and then he he's like, well, do, do I pick up? He doesn't get that much attacking threat. So for the five, is it worth the nine point nine or or whatever he came in at dunk if he was nine point five? makes that part like st- start making a decision rather than because if he's less than nine like you know if he's like 8.8 or, or something like that i think he go- automatically goes in as well no, he'll be, i think he'll, he'll be one of the highest priced defenders next year now won't he Hope, um, hopefully i mean it's got down towards the 10 mark i would have thought mm. to be honest because it's consistently proven over so many years now and now that they've obviously finished top six is my like, oh, okay right we'll, 
will treat Brighton a little more yep. seriously as yep. well. The Rodri one's interesting because the difference between, say, him and Dunk is Dunk, you know, will come in handy for the captaincy. Rodri... You're never going to captain him, really. If, if the big Norwegian's fit, you're probably not, so it becomes a big investment then, isn't it? That's why De Bruyne's not, isn't a great Sky... In my opinion, isn't a great Sky fantasy asset. We should have captain of the world. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, previously, obviously, he was yeah. because of the all round ability. Nobody um, should be getting like eight man city players on overhaul or anything like that, should they? No, no, no. We are uh, a uh, foolish idea, James. Thanks. Um, we could put a line through about five or six of the questions we've had in on Twitter. Basically, how's the hangover less? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Including Dan about. Cox, who's jumped in, and he was there on the piss yesterday <laughs> with you. So, that was the first uh, time I met Dan as well. It's good, really? it's good, it's good to Can you handle his problem. liquor? Yeah, he was a, I, I, I was almost... Paul doesn't know. He left eight o'clock, so that tells us... Oh, okay, no, then. Uh, no, no, we had, had a really good day. Think, That's the um, Norfolk in him, isn't it? It was. Nine, nine, I say nine, it's nine, very nine, good time. day. We were out with um, a load of the hub boys. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, sorry, and, and girls. And um, when Paul won, which is obviously a, you know, a really kind of mad moment, uh, Will, Will um, Thomas, the, who owns the hub, yeah. when I got Paul there, uh, bottle of champagne and we all had uh, sort of like shots of champagne got the glass of champagne and then Paul had ha- half the bottle and Paul was really he was really I think he was really stunned and overwhelmed and he was like you know I, I, can, I can get it because you it doesn't quite sink in that you've actually won it because you know for a for, well for, for all of us right if you if you win a fantasy game it's what it's what we love it's what we do right it's our whole it's what it's what kind of we spend 80 or 90 percent of our of our lives doing and thinking about, so it's it's, you know, it's a real kind of the pinnacle of it. I don't regardless of the cash. If, if if you get if you get to the end and you're top of the leaderboard, though, you've got to like I said before, you've got to be waiting for Opta to screw you over by giving <laughs> yeah. a tier point to someone think, or taking a tier point away. Thank you know, oh, ten, ten points and not like one. Yeah, really yeah. But Paul Paul necked half a bottle of champagne. So in like in, in about twenty minutes, Paul went from really like. You know, um, kind of stunned and overwhelmed and humble yeah, yeah. to like Weirdly. staggering around the bar and a bit leery. Is it Scottish? Do you answer some of the other questions? Like someone's put in, how does it feel to, to be filthy rich, Paul? We know now. He's swinging half bottles of champagne straight. He's like, that's it. Well, this was, is my life now. Well, we had the, we do, um, we are pod when uh, Liam and, and Ian and, and Dan used to be on and we used to rotate kind of third, um, a third guest on it. Um, we used to do the Four Nations uh, League, so um, Ian Parham won it last year and passed the cup over, so we filled the cup with the champagne as well. Nice. I was thinking about that. So. <laughs> you know, I've just got my eyes on that bottle down there, James. There's a bottle of champagne down there. We'll start spraying it in a minute. Uh, you don't Paul, need it in the fridge. No, Paul, you need to chill it. Yeah. Uh, Paul, uh, Sky player in FPL, um, you all know he's yep. down in South Wales. He wants to know, Fergie, when you're flying Paul to Wales, because he won the nip and a half. He did win the nip and a half. So yeah. he wants to meet you. He's not bothered about Fergie. So he's like, <laughs> he, wants, he wants Fergie to be paying for the flights for Paul to come and meet Paul. Right? So, so yeah. we like so we do another like a non hub podcast on the side called Nip and a Half. It's just a short, bite sized, fifteen minute um, competition where we add our FPL Dream Team Telegraph and Sky scores together, and then compete like compare the overall score against the overall score. And and the, and the bet was the loser paid for the other. To fly to their home city and like, like pay for the day out kind of thing. So I uh, so I beat so I beat um, Fergie, but I want to go to Barry Island. I want to go to Barry Island and my and my local oh, uh, neighbour club as well. We so, can uh, uh, Gavin and Stacey up down exactly. in Barry Island. I think if I'm jumping, a lot of people be listening to that going. How are you balancing these games and yeah. these formats? It's a, it's, it, it, it's spreadsheet. Really about last, <laughs> last, last night though, I, I think that we've been playing. So so Paul and I have played Dream Team Telegraph uh, for like. 20 or 25 years and obviously Sky since Sky started and we came kind of latish to FPL I think so the other three games would probably need the most attention the most engagement um, when say you know you learn that Haaland has dropped for people who haven't been playing for a long time they need to really consider and think about the kind of implications of that on uh, you know on whatever else whereas because we've been playing for such a long time we can just kind of go like right do do that, that's what we kind of need to do and uh, and you know set the old like you know our, our our phones and you know any any really experienced players alarm across these things the phone is just full of alarms for like uh, the different times of the matches and you, you go on and if you're you know if you're at your nan's house having lunch you, the alarm oh just excuse me a minute oh, i need to go i need i got a work call I need to 
go off to the loo or whatever else. And it's just like, it's that constant sort Work of thing. All, all, all weekend. <laughs> so the my main takeaway from that was lie to your family. Lie, lie to your family. And, uh, but no, sorry, in, in, terms, in, terms of the, in terms of the thing, it's just you kind of know what to do. We've played it for so long that, you know, it's, it's easier to balance. But we also spend like both of us and uh, like all, like lots of re-experienced marriages and all these things just spend way far too long on spreadsheets, on fancy football, was, herb, on FF stuff and all that jazz as well. I was at my previous boss's for a barbecue last summer and it was the day of the draft game launching and I'm sitting on my phone under the table like picking the draft. Is, is that why he's a me. previous boss? <laughs> 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 yeah. Nice. Because um, Manon Martin uh, from the Manon pod, he's saying like, well done Paul for winning Sky. Is Sky still going to remain your main focus or do you want to add another format as as the one like sky or Tele sun or telegraph or uh do you give them equal focus anyway like do you have a a, a favorite sky by, yeah by far and that's not, towards... yeah and that's that's why i want that's why i originally wanted to do the podcast i did um mark edworthy who when there was very very little sky content, content yeah. around like 10 10 11 years ago um i was in a whatsapp chat with will thomas the founder of the hub and, and dan cox that's how I, i've known dan for that long as well um, and, and Mark had started up a, or Eddie had started up a podcast at that point and, and I joined a couple of times and then when Fergie went and, and, and joined the, the hub, Will had suggested that Dan and I might want to might want to come along and I just I, like I just really like the Sky game, I like the format of it if you engage time in it, um, you could I, I say you do need a bit of luck but if you can have a plan and, and add that element of luck and, and layer that over the top of it you can get, get get top finishes and, and there's good good prizes on on board as well. So I think the the rewards for putting in the effort in Sky is a lot more so than than, than the other three games. Um, in terms of well, James alluded to it there, I don't have that. Like I've got an eleven month old hold, hold at home. I've got I've got a, I've got a job which uh, um, obviously work like when I'm when I'm busy I work longer hours as well. So. Um, I'm thankfully giving up football now, so that this like this is my hobby. Um, on top of that as well, so I probably don't have much more bandwidth than what I've already got to think about it anymore. Another game, but the, but the other games, like Fergie said there about Telegraph, that almost plays itself a little bit in that you yeah. might need to do a transfer, but there's no captaincies in it. Dream Team, there's no captaincies. Um, you have to have a good memory to remember who's in my team across the teams. But one bit of news has that filter effect across the multiple games and. And whilst they all have different point scoring and, and different makeups, gen like the, the general players that you're going to want in the games or, or days that you want to transfer them in anyway. So, um, yeah. Does that help when you're watching a game and you've got two players in one format, two players in another format? You stop almost caring about where the points are, or do you still think I'd, I've got these guys in Sky, so they're my priority? Sky. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's funny because when we record. Uh, I've had loads of times this season where I've had different players in Sky and different players in FPL and it's hurt might hurt me in FPL when we were recording on a Monday and we were going through all the games you're like yeah so and so scored and uh, it's affected me badly in FPL but inside I'm like I don't give a shit because I owned them in Sky and I captained them and I've actually done all right and you're kind of torn a little bit sometimes it's funny like that how, how it can play out um, Mark Williamson raises a question and it's a bit of a loaded question Obviously, FPL is getting busier, uh, busier and busier in the sense that more good players. So now people are trying to argue the case that top 50k is like the old top 10k. He's saying it's top 250 now the same as top 100 in Sky. And the reason it's loaded is because he finished 224th. Um, so <laughs> then he, then no, kind of looking at it. the piss with your but question. I um I held back a lot of transfers and I was like just outside the top thousand. And when I when I piled into loads of transfers, I went from a thousand to about 250, 300. And then I, my, my transfer count started leveling off against everyone. But that 250 to 100, I could never make that jump. I really hit a wall there because everybody from 300 upwards was so good. You, yeah, but if you hadn't missed the six or seven counts, yeah, transfer, I would have won it. Would have been the top I would have won it. But, <laughs> so, you know, you'd have no money. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I, I felt for poor. I thought I'd give him a chance. <laughs> it's interesting uh, no, because but, you look at like the podcasts, uh, views, and YouTube. Uh, sorry, the YouTube views and podcast listens probably you know you know I don't know what yours are like but across ours definitely you know and they and you know and, and they definitely get like our our weekly YouTube gets over a thousand views every week and if it's getting over a thousand views there's over a thousand you know engage managers engage, yeah. and they're engaged they, they're the ones that don't listen on the podcast version are the ones that don't even know we exist yeah so 250 
for me, is is a really, really good season nowadays. If you think you've got a thousand people watching a video, even at this time of the season, because at the start it's more like it's, it's into the thousands, and your you you and yours and yours is the same, I guess. So you've got you've got a lot of really uber engaged managers who take the time out of their week to listen and watch the Sky content. Yeah. I wonder how many of like just even the patrons that we have. Like, there's probably a couple hundred in there that are yeah, active yeah. on Sky, Serious, yeah. and they're obviously chatting on Slack all the time and I, doing I mean, what they're doing. I mean, I've I've often said that I think. You know, to people want to join and play Sky for the first time. My comment has always been, look, you could win it straight away. You'll hear stories of people in the top 100 this year. Oh, it's first season. I've seen, seen a few messages yeah, this yeah. morning. First season of Sky, I finished 70th and stuff like that. It's like amazing. But I have also consistently said this game is going to get harder because the explosion of, of pods like ours and other good shows out there, that people are just becoming far more engaged. Like what percentage of, say, the top 1,000 finishers would you say don't take in any Sky Fantasy content, whether it's written, audio, video. Can't be that many. I'd be, I'd be really, really surprised if it was a high proportion because I think between, you know, between the, the content that you know we do um, and you know other content um, creators, the other podcasts that are out, the other websites that are out as well. So I think, I think between us all, we've we've kind of understand now that I wouldn't say you know there's there's never probably the the, the the kind of put way to play but the most optimal way to kind of play the game is becoming more and more refined each year i think and i think that if you're not following the content unless you're sorry I, i'm 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 probably uh leaving out there that the, there's a there's a lot of older people experienced people who, who who will play the game their own way who don't you know who, who may not but they have known from years how to play the game yeah but for a new person to come in yeah not listen to the content and do well i think they would have to yeah. be incredibly lucky. Understanding the tiering points, I think, is exactly. is, is exactly. difficult. The other thing that's helped, like, helped me massively this season is the spreadsheet planner that James has been doing yeah. for a little while now, since probably COVID. Yeah. But yeah, just being able to, to map it out. Like Mark Williamson asked the question, did you make any decisions that were influenced by other people or kind of, and uh, it's, that's, that leans into the same yeah. discussion, right? Where experienced managers will be able to, to take it in and understand and make their own decisions. Uh, newer people might get influenced a little bit more uh, on other people's decisions. Uh, yeah, I just I've got a series of things that I think in my head when I'm make, like making decisions. One is the biggest. What's the biggest regret on an outcome? And then if I'm very torn, um, I'll maybe put a poll out and I don't know, like getting like maybe like five hundred votes on who the top captaincy is, and I just went with whoever. I've like, seen you do that a few times yeah. this year. Like, is no one going to do the sky captaincy? And I'm thinking Paul needs to know something here. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I've done that before. Going to, going to the question before about the the FPL top ten k and the sky thing. The one difference that I would say is that that top ten k thing was a manufactured term used in the FPL community, like. Because there's no leaderboard of top 10k, it's um, it's a thing that was done, and then that was the, that was a benchmark. The difference in Sky, in my opinion, is that the leaderboard for the top 100 shown, where you can't see beyond the top yeah, 100, and then therefore the name and lights type dopamine effect from being someone being able to see where your team is without you having to post what your rank is and then and then share it on Twitter. I would say that that's the main difference. It doesn't directly answer the question because the game is much much harder. And there's much more engaged people and a lot of people from FPL have heard good things about Sky and you can see on like threads on Twitter and such like where oh, I might give, might give Sky a go next year and, and these are people that whilst you could argue that FPL is a lot more luck or not the people, there's people in FPL that get top 10 finishes constantly or top 25k finishes constantly and, no, and many. Like, I'm sure I saw it earlier this season that like every year 80% of the top 10k in FPL is new, new. Exactly. every yeah, year yeah. but I bet that's not the case yeah, in but Sky then take people like Harry what's he a top 5k three years in a row yeah yeah so? but he's in that 20% but 80% but I bet it's, it's not the same as Sky guy if you took the top if he went into a bar mate it's not that experience take the top 250 I hate you. in Sky yeah. I reckon more than half will have been in, in and around that before uh, there's more more consistency in the managers yeah, that gets in the top. Yeah, in the top top hundred names are like yeah, your Dan, yeah. Your Dan Sherwood, think, yeah, you know, yeah, Dan Sherwood, your Lee Giles. Like, exactly. these guys it, are um, yeah, when positions. when you talked about the enjoyment of the fantasy game, I think it's it's enjoyable where you see people you know doing well and ha and being able to support them along the way as well. Like as much as we are in competition, yeah. you still want them to do well and win and what, whatever else. Like definitely, I think it's, it helps to have names. You're like, oh, so and so's there, so and so's there. 
when you know the the names adds a bit bit of spice. It does. And when you when you played alongside him, because we 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 used to be on an, an older online f uh, like forum years ago called Pfizer, which is like you know, I'm talking about like. 15 years ago now, and there's all people on there who compete with, with mini leagues all the way back yeah. then, you're still competing against the same sort of players now, and you know they're like, they're really good guys, they're really good players, and um, you know they, they, they've got amazing history, it's just because they're not on Twitter and stuff, they're some of the best, the, you know, the best managers, they've won hundreds and hundreds of thousands of pounds, you know, over the, over the years, a, a bit a bit further back, obviously, when the prize were bigger as well, because, um, was it the, the Dream Team prize a few years ago, Mick? Mick Byron won like a quarter of a million pound on Send me a list. We'll invite them to the next investor opportunity. Yeah. In <laughs> <laughs> these but, uh, guys are winning hundreds of thousands. But yeah, you, you see all you see all these names in this. You know, it's a it's a real mixture of like the old school players who played for a really long time. Yeah, the, all the all the kind of new you know the guys that that, that uh, you guys introduced through your you know through your pods and stuff. All the guys that. Members of the hub, you know our, our kind of WhatsApp groups that, that we got in the, you know, in the hub is just littered with people doing it, and you see all these names. It's just it's so fantastic, as you say, to support everyone. Everyone's seen all the, you know, everyone winning all their mini leagues, and then you know most most of the names you see in the top kind of fifty, you recognise yeah. at least half of them, and you know that they're having a great time and a great season, and it's just a great a great community to be a part of, and and everyone is like the support that you know we, me, but obviously mainly Paul has got across the whole community has been. You know, it's been an absolute, an absolute joy. You know, all 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 our all our WhatsApp groups, all over Twitter, all over our podcast, all in the chat, wherever else. Yeah, there hasn't been one person being like, oh, you know, everyone's been go on, Paul, go and win it, go and win it. And it's just I remember that that joy. week where uh, you had one, two, and three between the two of you. Like the number of screenshots I saw with everybody <laughs> tweeting was like, I'm sure they know. <laughs> it felt like everybody had to screenshot and tweet it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was, that was basically dominating my timeline that day, I remember. But Fergie. everyone was positively like, go on. How is it you, for you, Fergie, year on from what you achieved to reflect on that now in terms of your relationship with Sky and, and Dream Team? I think, the, um, so with, with Dream Team, I think I, I, you know, well, well, the first thing I'd say, and, and, and Paul now knows it, and you can't, probably really feel it until you've gone through it is how much luck you need to actually win a game and how much these individual moments like that that Rashford goal and that goal that Felix scored late on so I was at like a social club on I was in my local club on Thursday night Felix scored a consolation goal in the 89th minute and I am jumping around the place like you wouldn't believe and everyone's looking at me thinking why are you celebrating a Felix consolation goal in the yeah, fall yeah. 89th but minute at random that moment yeah. and when I won Dream Team so I took out Harry Kane on the week before, he scored two goals against Leeds, and both were disallowed. I don't know if you, I don't know if, if if you remember that one was offside, one was a foul. If Harry Kane would have scored one of those goals, I wouldn't have won. So in in terms of winning it, the first the first thing Paul knows now, the luck you need is just insane. Like I say, you need to play well to put yourself in a position, but to actually win it, it's completely out of your hands because there's so many individual events that, that don't you know that, that can influence it. So, but um, in terms of into in terms of what it means for Paul, I think the I think the main thing, like I've been completely calm all through. You know, I was, you know, I had a shot of winning, winning Sky, and I said this at the time in Dream Team. I think that the Pauls are a bit the same as well. We love we love fantasy football so so much. So we we love fantasy football as much as you love Spurs, right? So, so it's like, it's, it's just, it's just happening to us. Yeah, I think at the moment it's a rocky relationship <laughs> right there. on that side of the but table with James the, and Spurs. I feel a little bit better this morning. Yeah, yeah. A but little. the kind of like winning, winning the game was like just a, a complete, you know, it's up there with, with, with any event in my life. It was absolutely amazing. And um, I'm just, I'm so, so pleased. I'm so pleased for Paul that, you know, because I know how much fantasy football and Sky in particular means, means for yeah. Paul. That he's he you know he's going through it now. He's, he's probably still a bit stunned and overwhelmed, but the actual euphoria of uh, you know of achieving a life goal, right? This is this is a once in a lifetime experience. And I'm not I'm not I'm not, I'm not talking about the many. The, the many is amazing. Don't get me wrong. It's yeah, like yeah. Brilliant. But just winning the game, but winning it's an absolute life goal that you've yeah. that, that, that you've achieved. So I'm just I'm so pleased for Paul that he's able to have that you know the euphoria of 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 it and that, you know you know. And, and everything that comes with it because he just he's the best guy and he completely completely deserves it that's so interesting yeah. because when I left the house this morning the last thing my wife said to me is what year are you going to win it then <laughs> <laughs> next, oh, year, next year are you aware I remember of, uh, God, at, the, at the end of last 
season um i did quite well in the i think it was april manager of the month i was doing all right i was up there there about so i was trying to help get my wife to be like supportive and she's like what are you gonna win i was like a console she goes you don't even play computer games like, You're right, i don't she's like, what's the point for a console were you aware Fergie, when, when you were would you ever first I mean, second. No, no, I was third. third. Second third. or third. I got to third, yeah. Were you, were you aware, because certainly I saw it, that, that people were speculating, if you won Sky this year, question yeah. if you would, if that would make you the best fantasy football manager ever? Yeah, I, it, it, it's a, you know, obviously it's, it's a difficult, like, um, difficult thing for me to talk about. One, because I would never want to ever even put myself into that bracket or even like have a chat about it. But I also know years in years, you you know, in, in years gone past, in all fairness, when the games have got a lot smaller, that um, people have been far more successful than I have and they've won a lot, more, you know, a lot more money than I have. I do think the game in the last four or five years across all fantasy formats has become much harder because of, because of content, right? So everyone's got the same information now. Before you had your edge, like five, 10 years ago, you had your edge just by knowing the rules are better than everyone else. You know, like like even knowing about about passing bonus was was an yeah. edge. That's not an edge anymore. And every all these little kind of nuances and intricacies were were your edge. Whereas now your edge is it's you know you've got to you've got to play at like a really kind of elite level all all season to do really really well. So I would say you know that you know I I I knew I wouldn't really have had a chance of winning when I was third because I roughly knew Paul had eight players the same as me. I roughly knew we had the same amount of transfers and he was like 40 points clear. So I would have had to do a complete couple of Hail Mary moves to kind yeah. of do it. Just by Callum Wilson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just by Callum Wilson. If, <laughs> yeah. I, if I had done that, I'd, I'd have Wilson had a versus chance. his set. But, you know, in terms, in terms of the question, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd uh, no, I just, I just feel like ridiculously um, privileged to be able to work full-time fantasy football to do the thing I love. And, you know, as a, a you know, as a byproduct of me being able to spend a lot of time doing this stuff, well, obviously, I've spent a lot of time planning, a lot of time looking at all these things, and you know, I'm able to, you know, you know, able to do well. But in terms of you know, best fancy, this is so open to interpretation because I've had a pretty shit last three FPL seasons. <laughs> 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 but, but in the you know, in the other formats, I've done I've been really well. But but this is my thing. In, in the other three formats, I do feel you're a lot more rewarded for your performance. Quality of I skill. Do, I yeah. do think FPL is. Um, it's it's a lot. There's a lot more, le- and, and this and, and this won't be popular among the FPL community, but I do think that you get rewarded a lot more in the other three games for the time and effort and commitment you put Planning into them. Planning and stuff. I, think, I, think sure. I don't. Huh. Not cool. this year. Not, not this year. No. Michael wants to know, uh, and I don't know what Michael is. Just a Michael. There's this time between uh, the you knowing that you captain Kane, so that the, the minute after, and knowing that second and third of captain Salah. How did that feel? Well, there, so there was no real time. No, there's no time. <laughs> no, sorry. So, so, so you know, as soon as the dead, as soon as the games kick off, you can see what they've done, right? Yeah, but I didn't look until Kane had already scored. Oh, right. So you just ignored so, it. Well, it was not for purpose. Just I don't like. I was just in, in the moment and not drinking as well. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. I, it was one of those things that I hadn't. I don't know. I, had, I didn't know that they were going to open their teams as well. So right, I didn't okay. know who they'd captained because. You would just see the, the interest score. So the game. point you but, knew, you were already ahead. Exactly. Yeah. I, I so then it Kane, kind of, yeah. Yeah. Kane had already scored by the time that Dan pointed out to me that um, they'd open the they'd, teams. They'd open the team, both captain Salah, and I think maybe somebody in one of the hub group chats or, or something had mentioned to Dan to, to have a look. So um, yeah, so yeah. So there was never that window of okay, this could go. Well, I had, and I had a bit of yeah, and I had a bit of cushion most of the day as well. Liverpool conceded very early. So at Canary, and Brighton conceded early, and, and Brighton conceded yeah. early, and that was I think the team in third had Colwell, who I thought was a, a really and, astute move by by them because um, he's been great and picked up passing bonus and had stealing goals as well, and then Estupinan was benched and second had Estupinan. So um, yeah, and he, that day when Estupinan got the haul against Arsenal, we felt oh, like yeah. really yeah. close. Right, yeah. right, right at the very end, the right at the death as well, like Ramsdale palming it right in his path. I, was, I uh, think you messaged me right after that game and said, and "Game over." That's yeah. it, you know, because because we knew, like like we knew that my goose is cooked. <laughs> we knew you were out of transfers, and you were done, and we knew that the other guys had had better teams for you at that point. Yeah. But um, again, again, the way things unfold, it doesn't, it doesn't, well, it doesn't work out. Mal- Malas transfer, like if you were to tell me that <laughs> Mare, like so, Malas transfer was solely marks to Mares, <laughs> and if you told me that Mares was going to play the last four games. I was like, oh, oh, that's obviously a really smart move. And he scored, he got one assist yeah. in that time. I know that people, obviously, that brought him in in FPL would have been 
he'd been more popular move in FPL than he was in Sky. But um, I had looked and he had played like the last seven on the bounce in the league, and I thought that I didn't know Arsenal were going to crumble like they did. And I thought that he would play like that he would play maybe three out of four, and I was pretty happy with that as a Man City attacking uh, attacking player. But um, how 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 crazy to think that. If you'd have held that last transfer back to last Thursday, yeah, you'd have brought in Shaw, who came off half time. Or De Gea, yeah. Well, probably brought in Shaw, yeah. It's crazy how these things unfold. I forgot to buy Shaw. I'd have I'd worked out in my favour this time. you use all your transfers in here? Yeah, I left the last one. <laughs> I used 49. But listen, <laughs> we don't want to make Paul feel bad about himself. So what was your <laughs> final rank? Three twen- uh, 310, I think. 310 plus one transfer. Uh, yeah. Plus, plus seven missed. Plus captains. seven missed. <laughs> missed. <laughs> Deadlines that's slash top, captain C's. That's, that's, that's top 15. But you know, the fir- you know when I missed the first deadline was the first Friday night. I didn't captain Jesus. I had uh, Jesus. So I intended to captain Jesus. I probably, I'm pretty sure I did. You know he didn't actually do anything that night, right? Yeah, but still, that was my fir- first missed deadline was on the first fucking day. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't like halfway through the season or whatever. It was on day possible? one. How is that even so, possible? Yeah, everybody's scared. When The, the season that I miss, uh, remember every deadline. But... It kind of lends into a question that a few people have asked in terms of like, will you carry on your playing style into next season? Or what did you learn this season that you want to do next season? I know my two takeaways for me is like, firstly, in the first half of the season, depending on, it's all dependent on these overhauls, is just steady Eddie. Don't, don't use my transfers, just stick with the, the, the players that I know are going to play and tick along at five, seven points. And then the second one is, if I'm going to be buying a player on that day that I'm like 90% sure is going to play and I'm, not going to be around when deadline is just do it early in the day like there was the David Rayer on a Monday night and I feel like I should have just done it in the day because I knew he was going to play so I'm going to not not hang my hat on I'd rather use a transfer and know I've done it and then okay if he doesn't play whereas missing out can sometimes be mad missed out on Madison that way missed out on Salah once that way and David Rayer did, um, so I'm going to just move early did, did either of you guys have blanket defence at any point I think my Arsenal. few Arsenal. Arsenal. Yeah. I had uh, Zinchenko, Gabriel, Saliba, and Ramsdale. But remember, um, there, there was a Man City pile on opportunity, and then there was Arsenal pile on opportunity. Oh, I've just not after forgotten, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I'd already made one dig at you in this, in this pod, so I didn't want to use that as an opportunity for the second. Um, but yeah, I, so I, I went heavy on Arsenal in the in the run of fixtures that they had when they had the extra fixtures there. So I think I had that before. I didn't have Ben White, but I had the, the other four defensive assets that were playing. Regular. It's not felt like a lot of that though. Like certainly in the running, it felt more about having talisman. And then I guess we've all ended up with a cluster some four or five teams. And actually, we might have been better off sticking with some players, partly because like Arsenal obviously didn't take it right to the end and things like that. We would have been better off with with some talisman ironically in that bit and it's felt more like that season and I think I always say that fantasy football seasons will be different so C can every week obviously A changing the team but B keep conceding one goal right like Edison we've mentioned all season long and stuff right it might be next year City go on that run and have five six seven clean sheets in a row and we're playing a very different game right and then you need to get on it the COVID backlog on the Season City went on a really good strong defensive run, and Zinchenko was playing for City at yeah. that time as well. He was getting his game at left back. The, Gund- the Gundogan run was it? Yeah, yeah. 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 And so like you... I think most of it, like I was on like eight City players, I think for that run. City kept, I think it was eleven clean sheets in all competitions on the trot, and that just uh, the, well, that was that was the year when certain, and, and a part of the reason I I went all in on Man City, but it, but it was uh, there's runs there's runs like that which which are just if you, if you can just spot the. the Defense is steady. You can you, know, you can look at the chances they they, they play. But I I think then you look at their defense this year compared to that. I think they had Stone. I think it was Stones and Diaz was their back. You know, they had a really Cancel- settled Cancelos. back four. Cancelo. Cancelo. Yeah. They had a really settled back four that that season. Whereas this year they've just chopped and changed every week. And they yeah. haven't looked steady this week. Cancelo is still at about two percent of the top thousand, isn't he? Or so is he? <laughs> I think so. Yeah, I remember at the end of the other week, you you were a little upset these that, that all these me. people beat you. <laughs> they still had Cancelo in the team. The, the, the one, the one back thing back next year, mate. Back I'm next not year. sure he'll be. You will, you, you will, you will. <laughs> so I, because I, I guess because I played Sky for for quite some time, I think it's like twelve seasons. Um, it's, it's getting harder and harder to to take lessons learned. But there is one from this season for me. So I thought about the Pope Ederson situation post overhaul quite a bit. And trying to determine whether I think it was luck or not, the one th- like the one thing that swayed me towards bringing in Pope was that 
Newcastle always played before Man City, so there was an always the opportunity to come off. If, yeah, if Ederson went on, a, you weren't going to flip one. it. So you could flip Pope to Ederson, but every, anyone that was on Ederson at that point, I have a lot of DMs or something like that. What, what, what would you advise I do in this? I, if I picked uh, Ederson, I would never have come off him. And it's one of those things that you, you've almost pushed yourself into a path that yeah. you have to see out. And it's not a short-term plan, it's a long-term plan. And yeah. you have to see that see that all the way through. And that can be painful. It was like a 60-point swing or something like that for, for that. Whereas if you did the opposite, you, you always had that opportunity that if the other was going on the run, that you could flip it with the extra game. And, 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 and therefore, the decision's harder whether you think that the run's good enough of the player that you're coming off that, or you've just been unlucky, but you still do have that opportunity. And giving yourself that opportunity, I think, is really important. It's all about flexibility. Yeah, and such looking forward to next season. Like, Obviously, we know then, so Liverpool, Brighton, Villa will have this Thursday, Sunday. So you're going to have yeah. Liverpool, Brighton, Villa will be a lot of Sundays. So, so Liverpool, you kind of want to going to keep um, with that in mind that they always play second. Maybe West Ham, we'll see. But then that's four teams that are consistently wanting to do Thursday, Sunday stuff. So Sundays will be quite busy next year. There might be opportunity to pile in a little bit. Worth, worth keeping an We'd eye. We'd have been looking at United and Arsenal, the same thing at the start this, of this, this season, season as right? well. So yeah. I'll tell you one that sticks out. It's something you said a couple of years ago, actually, Paul, which stuck in my mind last summer was about identifying really early on, i.e., in pre-season, a good promoted player to have, i.e., this year's Palina. Paulinho. Yeah. Yeah. And when I looked in the summer, I didn't need to look very far to to find that if there was going to be one from the promoted teams that would stand out, who was a cheap enabler, it was him. Will you be looking for that again, do you think? Yeah, and it's, so it's about flexibility. So Fergie and I were talking on the train here, and I was like, I'm hungover, and I need to think of what we're going to say on this podcast. <laughs> and I can't think just now. And I had written down, I had written down some notes on the plane yesterday morning, um, coming down, uh, down to London as well. Um, and that, So that goes hand in hand with something else. So about team structure, what I was on really, really early was the ability to get on Holland, Kane and Salah all in one team and not have to mess about with transfers and how you do that is with budget enablers and then having, so picking the budget enabler, right, or at least that price point. So if that's not the right budget enabler and you need to move on and you gain the fixture for coming off the Saturday and bringing in the Sunday, fine, absolutely, fi absolutely fine with that if you're not on the right one early. But having that placeholder at that six and a half million to seven million spot for me is really important because it allows that you can get to a player in one move. And one of the things I learned a few seasons back was, or one of the takeaways I said, I would never make two moves to bring in one player. Yeah. And I, would, I, I want to make sure I had planned well in advance that if I ever needed a player, it's one move, and it's yeah. one move from, from players I want and I don't want to be messing about bringing in. I didn't take out, like, I know there was opportunities to come off Holland and to come back on, you know, like three for zero situations. I didn't remove them from my team all season um, for that, and I felt I benefited by using that extra one, two transfers. What, what I, price I would he have to be if you not start with him? Like, like 16 million or something like that? Gen like genuinely has this is what I'm saying. With the, I think the guys did a great job with the pricing this year and the reclassification yeah. of players, like genuinely yeah. really good. Agreed. You know, Rashford at like 8.1 was an outlier, but based on his previous yeah, seasons, yeah. like it's reasonable. It's not like we all started with him. Yeah, we didn't exactly. Um, but I, I do think for circumstances like that, that's it. Feels to me for the, the progress that again we need to kind of stop that, where we can do that just really easy and go. Yes, I'm having Hall and Salah Kane at the start of next season. It's, it's a 16 million and no need to captain him like single game days where he could really hurt you. Well, it just kills all well. the city, as you mentioned earlier. It kills all the city assets. It kills, yeah. well, not all the city assets. I feel, I feel like them. as well in in FPL, I understand it more in terms of like. Um, the engagement and stuff where they want everybody to have their favourite players, if you will, yeah. that in terms of the global game and that. For Sky, I feel like the majority of us want the challenge a, a little bit more and a little bit more variety and variation. That's all I'd say. But Holland's not going to be that price. Sorry, yeah. Fergie. No, it won't be that expensive. We've got a question coming in from Ben Sky. I think we can do this round the table, which will be pretty cool. Interested in on the rest of your guys' answers. Biggest troll... And star player of the season. Zaha and Zaha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, that we've got this own this uh, a support group for James with his love of Zaha. I think it's weird. My my star of the season um, is gonna is probably Rodri. I just there's so, I don't know even why. It's just the consistency that I love. Yeah, and he and all through that first half of the season, he was lowly owned. 
There's two actually. There's him, and the one that's closely behind is David Rea, who just slotted in and then just kept ticking away with the mm. things. And then post the overhaul, I didn't. The second half of that season, I didn't own Rodri or David Rea for hardly any of it, and I missed them. Like that comfort blanket of those guys, and I always tried to find opportunity to get back, and I didn't because there was no fixture gain or no real. There was always, but that makes more sense because they got better fixtures or more fixtures, and never went back to them. But those two definitely are um, are up there as my two stars of the season that I would always have eyes on for next season. In terms of troll, I mean, it's a bit of a harsh one because sometimes you gamble on a player for a short-term uh, daisy chain and it works or it doesn't work. But I, I gambled on Danny Ings about a month and a half ago as a daisy chain and it was just a flop. I, uh, completely nothing happened from it. Zero points, useless. But it was a it was a gamble. gamble, and it was a daisy chain where I knew I was in for two or three games, and I moved it on. Whatever happens, happens. But that was a waste. Danny Ings was a waste. Any star troll? Yeah, like Callum Wilson. So, he won it for you, mate. Yeah, so, so, <laughs> so, yeah. So Cal, Callum Wilson, oh, like, yeah, obviously has to be a star for me. I I, I mentioned earlier on. I brought in Martinelli at a point where people were taking him out. I, I think he'd blanked for three games in a row and. Like Trossard had just been signed, and there was talk about yeah, that's yeah. his side. That's going to be rotation in less minutes, um, and and I I brought him in instead because <clears throat> I saved the transfer from doing. Remember, there was like a Rashford to Wolves four for zero scenario no. that came up. I, I know you're being sarcastic, so <laughs> um, uh, and I, I passed up that opportunity, and then and then I think news came out that Rashford might be out for a little bit longer. I was like, right, okay, so I do need to move him on now, and and I used the transfer to bring in Martinelli. So and so whilst it's an obvious player because he was at one time like over sixty percent owned in the top one k, I got him at a point where he was like less than twenty percent owned, and and you always want to be the, the way to play Sky, and this isn't like a this isn't an easy way of how to do this, but you want to be on the lowly one player first because. Before they start the bandwagon, you want to lead yeah, yeah. the template. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Lead the template, get on the bandwagon early, and then uh, and then you you've you've gained the points that everyone else is now chasing by by bringing them in. Um, so so Martin so Martinelli Wilson and Pope when I did the Pope over Ederson. Um, I also got on. I've owned Ollie Watkins twice this season. Mm. He trolled me the first time. Um, I got I got nothing out of him. I brought him in early. Pre World Cup. Captain, yeah, there was a captaincy yeah. opportunity. I think maybe against West Ham. You brought um, in uh, Rodrigo, such I think at the same time. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he'd actually worked out okay in that. He in didn't that do season. too badly. Yeah. It he's, wasn't. Um, it wasn't spectacular. One but, and, yeah, one but I brought in Watkins season. very early on that. I mean, like on that really good run that he did post post um, overhaul, post overhaul yeah. as well. So, so I'd say those were stars in terms of the trolls. It'd be easy for me to put Ederson in because I have owned them twice this season yes. and, and didn't own them at that point. He others more. But he trolled other, others more and I don't feel as burnt. Actually, here's another star for you and it's, uh, and it's a weird situation in that he would have annoyed so many people but I owned Dean Henderson when he was, when he was semi-popular and he went through that run of conceding with like and not picking up bonus and stuff and everyone came off him and I kept them in and they ended up getting my first ever Sky non-saved penalty save points from um, from penalty. Um, it's a shame just to find out that your victory has been Ill- illegitimate, mate. Illegitimate. <laughs> <laughs> I see. You need last edge. You need last edge. I've like always been changing your luck and people call me out for using that, that too often. That and role so. guy has got to go. I'm sorry. That has got that's to my, go. That's the first time I've ever it's benefited from go. it. And I have been in the position where high, well, Dean Henderson done it at Sheffield United. As well, I think De Bruyne hit the bar with a penalty one time, and everyone owned Dean Henderson. I didn't, and I was fuming. He must have been like really high ownership. So I have been hurt by it as well as uh, benefited this season. Oh, I've had it benefit me definitely, yeah. but I, I think that that needs binning. But yeah, not like not like uh, I've won my luck well this season, so I don't think I have any troll like any like, any trolls. Yeah, I've that. finished first. My trolls <laughs> are <laughs> my tales of war are this this and this. No, um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's gonna that's that's mean something up. I think for trolls, I've owned I've owned Edison the whole time that Paul's owned Pope. And I think I think when Niall was on with you guys last time, I think he said the only difference between Niall's team and Paul's team most of the season was the was the Edison over Pope call because that was like was it forty point swing at that at that point, yeah. wasn't it? So I've had Edison like 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 the whole time. I've had I brought in Stones about a month back, which is just 
I don't think he's, he's not started three of the last four, yeah. which is just like this is this wife sung, troll, which is part of the reason why I've sung from third down to like forty third is because I've just been stuck with these uh, people who just, who just haven't started. I think I, I think I'd add uh, Saliba into the into the stars. Um, started off with him. Yeah, he did well. He was he was a risky punt, I think, pre game week one. It may be easy to think now that it wasn't, but it was because no one knew he was gonna like no one knew he was gonna play. Um, Saliba, Polina allowed. Sal, uh, Salah, Kane, and Haaland. So I think I think I'd put them in as um, as stars. I think getting Ollie Watkins as well back for Tony. I think it was that was like a really strong move. And um, uh, but yeah, there's nothing nothing too too out of the blue. I say played a pretty template game this year. No other massive stars for me really. Right, how long you got? <laughs> <We're> <laughs> trolls, yeah? This is for trolls. Yeah, um, I think the whole Star, Man City team star would be if, if I think identifying that with Paulinho at the start and then yeah. being very good for people. I, I, certainly the Ollie Watkins one as well. I know a few people would question that. Turned out really good around sort of the match week 26 kind yeah. of uh, entry point. It's interesting just reflecting on Saliba. I'm pretty sure I didn't start with him. It came quite obvious quite soon. I'm reflecting on that. That absolutely should have been seeing him in that team at Palace. Should have been. He goes in because of what he can be. Like yeah. you said, rather than yeah. say with the Pope and Edison oh, I need to flip this to do this. It's like, this could be magic. Get him in. And if it's not, we'll, we'll work about that later. Uh, Trolls, any Manchester City player bar Holland and Rodri. Canate, Nunes, definitely. Ha, the two of them. Oh my goodness. Um, unfortunately, I don't think I had any Tottenham players other than Harry Kane, so that's not too bad. Arsenal attackers, always felt like I was on the wrong one. I'd be on Martinelli and Odegaard, Saka would go off. I'd, I'd get on Martinelli later, Saka would go off. It always felt like that. Um, so actually the majority of the Arsenal attackers, for me personally, I'd I'd throw in there as well. You'd have probably been on Romero and Dyer. Or, and like, and Romero, start, Romero, 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 uh, yeah, Romero was the, the Twitter pack at the start of the season. He was like 7.8. I years. mean, I'd, I'd happily say that. I, I think we said in pre-season, it's ridiculous, 0 0.3 less than Rashford. We said Romero was the one definite yeah. bad price. Yeah. Um, in the summer and yet he got injured. you wouldn't have paid 5.8 for him over <laughs> like the last few months so um, yeah I've got a number nice just just um, talk about the pricing there just a little bit you know you always hear about kind of up in Haaland's price and stuff but just, just a way maybe it's, I was thinking about uh, even even everything out just a tiny bit is just to increase the lower limit of the player prices because you know you, you know you well, there will always be some player who starts at 5.8 million or, you know, a Polina at 6.9 or a Solly Mart at 6.9. If you start the lower price limit at 7 million and then those, the current 7 million players are 8 million, you can't, that you, you literally cannot afford to have Haaland, Salah, Kane, yeah. Van Dijk, Ruben Diaz. Because someone would emerge. I mean, we've had, uh, it's not been spoken about that much, but say still with Stupin and right near the end. Yeah, if yeah. they're at the same price, start next season, 5.8, 6.6 so, respectively. You know someone like a Paulinho is going to emerge. I absolutely agree. I'd, they, they will, but if you, if, you lower, if, up. You, if you upper that lower limit, yep. you cannot have all those players. I think that will that will diversify because you, you're in a hat. The whole thing is having to make a decision, right? And and, and when when everything's easy, when you can have Saliba and say Solly March and Polina and you know Steele and Estupin and the rest of the game is, is easy, right? You feel, get all the stuff. I feel like one of the first things we probably do um, as Sky managers is look for them cheapies. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Rather than the bigger prices, yeah. like who's, 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 the, who's the six point two defender who might be the one and does and actually again I I genuinely think they did a great job of it this year, but yeah, yeah I would I would up it more. Yeah, for sure. And I think uh, that's something when we get down to uh, pre-season, the, the correspondence that we have, like, I'm interested in like Burnley, they'll have some good assets Josh Cullum. coming up. Yeah. Might be um, Carson Tears next year. Yeah, yeah and yeah. even uh, with Luton and Sheffield United as well. That's where that's my go-to of, of that. I think with the cheapies... I've intentionally said Josh Cullen because I don't want him to be like 6.1 or something. You don't, you want him to be expensive. It's got to be more expensive. So I'm going to look down the camera and say that now probably. Uh, if it helps <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it, but be new signings come into the league as well um, maybe some some tried and trusted that might move clubs as well you never know um, Harry Kane you never know he'll be playing in Germany don't worry right. about it <laughs> <laughs> but to, again it, I think for me first thing is always uh, captaincy cover the, cover the captaincy and make sure you got that sorted did you skip any this year? did you let any go? yeah the Wolves, Wolves. Um, whatever that game was on Wolves the, Fulham Wolves yeah, because yeah, yeah, Polina 
people had kept up uh, Polina and I, I took him out just as he stopped getting tackles at the end of the game. So another one that went, but he was on nine bookings. So I think he was, it, it probably was more than a coincidence that he, he stopped picking up tackles when he was due a two match ban. So yeah, I missed that. Um, and post that, he just got so many yellow cards again. Yeah. He's annoying. No Fulham, tears and yellow cards. Fulham Wolves, and I, I missed another captaincy. It was one well. towards the start of the season. I can't yeah. remember what it was now. I think, I think lots of people went on Neves, didn't they, in that Wolves yeah. game or... Uh, I, I, I do I do think if there's not a form player that those singles I did it the previous season and I, I finished I finished well in Sky last year as well the it was like Newcastle against Everton and people were bringing in like Ryan Fraser and I think that yeah. was a pop like the, 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 the popular community pick and avoided that then there and I think it finished one all no one nil with an Awobi goal or um, late on so yeah I, yeah. I, de- I definitely think that's a valid. It's, it's a known way it can be, isn't it? Skipped a few. Hole, Sorry, skipped a few, not missed a few. That's that, what with I meant that, to say. Wolves, skipped you, you buy a Wolves player, chances are it's one to get them in and there's two to get them out. Yeah, exactly. It's daisy exactly. chain. It only works from. It's from different that if you've got a team here. like, even if you didn't own a player from the team, but if you've got a, a, like a team like a Villa where you know that all of the root of goal, that they score goals and the root of goals comes through Ollie Watkins. But yeah, Wolves didn't have that. And I. It's that thing where you picture Ruben Neves doing really well and scored in one of these 40-yard schemers, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But in, in theory as well, when I looked at it afterwards, his ownership hadn't shot up as high as what community suggestion, you get in that group yeah. think of, that, oh, there's not a world outside of this and everybody's doing it. And in reality, I, I don't think he's, I, I could be wrong, but I don't think his ownership went above like 10% or, or something like that. So it wasn't that popular a move. He's tried to really like, one thing that um, helped me this year in terms of, of making decisions there, I'll, and I'll I'll hark back now to this time with with Trent. I really like Trent frightened me to death this last month. Not not owning him, yeah, he was absolutely yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Scoring goals, passing bonus. Okay, I don't think they kept that many clean sheets towards the end. Maybe no. a couple, but I think rather go for that Wolves Neves pick, which is a bit of a hail mate. He might score a forty yarder, like or he might get a penalty, which is you know he's not he's not going to do that. You know the the odds are he's not going to do that. Whereas if you can own Trent for four games at the end of the season using the same one transfer, you're practically guaranteed twenty, you know, or, or twenty five points. I think I think yeah, being I able to the balance same with that, Nunes and Canate. Like. <laughs> I think I think being able to balance that when you're making a decision of, you know, this this is a very unlikely to happen, whereas that transfer at the end of the season could be well will be likely absolute gold dust. Like, you know. Yeah, for sure. This when you've got teams chasing something or playing for something and you know exactly what, what they've got on the radar yep. as as well. You know what? If if I couldn't win Sky, then I wish my second team did. And if it wasn't my second team, I wish it was James. And if it wasn't you or first team, I'd take your second team winning. But fifth on the list, I'm not happy for you. I'm not one of the guys that pay the pitch, your patrons. I was going to say, <laughs> just pissed off every patron. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, yeah, nah, they're all right. But uh, yeah, no, honestly, we've been really enjoyed listening all season um, because it's always helped me get a counterbalance. When we, ha- when we have a conversation, the problem for us is, is always groupthink, where we talk ourselves into our own decisions and having a counterbalance listening all season has been, been really good fun. Um, and really enjoyable so uh, thank you for your content well done again on winning it um, thank you where can everybody find you give them the plug uh, yeah on twitter at Paul McAnulty one it's M-C-A-N-U-L-T-Y and I never remember the twitter handles for the podcast that we do so nah, you're going to have to James, James done it the last time I was on and now you're going to have to do it <laughs> somewhere on the internet yeah. Fergie uh, better not get it wrong uh, yeah, mine is uh, at FFH underscore Fergie and uh, our Sky went at FFH underscore Sky and um, obviously, we're all at fantasyfootballhub.co.uk. Cool. Are you recording well, a rap? Yes. Um, we will be in a couple in of weeks. Yeah, I'm, couple I'm, of weeks going on, I'm going on holiday now for, for a week or two, and Paul's going to sober up. Paul's going on holiday, then, and we don't know when he's back. <laughs> 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 it's one of them. Yeah, we're going to do a bit of a you know, you know rap upon celebration, and just say just say thanks to all our you know our listeners, our followers, our support, everyone else, because you know they, they like the reason we love doing the the, the streams of live is just just all the interaction and everyone's yeah, yeah. just so so being so supportive of you know of us and, and and Paul especially in this last month you know so so much we really want to share share that with everyone else as well yeah, and no negativity and in the Sky community yeah it's, it's fantastic none, isn't it? yeah and, and incredible and, yeah uh, ever know, since and, they killed man of the match yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. before then there was a bit <laughs> and thanks to you guys you know for obviously uh, you know using your uh, platform to bring kind of Sky up as well you know and uh, you know all all your all your content your 
Your your Sky podcast is the only fantasy podcast I listen to every week. So uh, you don't listen to the other ones. No, they're shit. No, I do. <laughs> I do um, no, some, some things. Uh, uh, no, no. Oh Clip. my god! Clip. <laughs> Clip. So, some, uh, yeah. like, you know, I'll, I'll say something close. There is, there is like, I would say I'd, like, I have played Sky for twelve years and thirteen, like twelve or thirteen years now. But there is bits that I'll take from everything that I read and everything I listen to, and like your ability to determine when, when fixtures are going to switch like you, you and I were talking about this and you're like oh you can buy me a pint if you win remember when, uh, when no, we were I'm playing for before there, there is always like for me there's always stuff that you can take out of um, uh, that I can take out of, of podcasts and, and, and Teco Fergie's sentiments uh, a lot, I love um, I love your guys pods as well and, and, and there's definitely bits that I've taken out of it that's helped me along the way as well likewise feelings mutual would I want to get and work for me <laughs> <laughs> James uh, anything else to add what we've got left this week is uh, oh obviously a, a um, public so, holiday Monday yeah, uh, FPL you've got a quiet week actually Bob. oh lovely job uh, the FPL game week review tomorrow Wednesday is now I should introduce I, I, you don't even probably know our Lu- new yes, Luton Town I've seen Dan Ashby's Dan joining Ashby. uh, we're going to do a pod on Luton on, on Wednesday I won money on Luton Thursday, on, uh, on Saturday uh, Fancy Football Scouts, uh, David Mundy and our good friend Benny Blanco joining me for a Game of 39 preview. Um, probably a bit more on that on tomorrow's pod as well. And sure. Friday, one more clash of correspondence, Manchester United versus Manchester City uh, with Gary Robinson and Johnny Pringle ahead of the FA Cup final. Nice. So busy week ahead despite the end of the football season. There's still a few games left to go. Uh, if you want to support the show, I would say probably don't. Wait till July now, Thursday. really. Oh, yeah. No, don't even There's just literally that, yeah. no point because June, uh, we're obviously taking a little bit of time out. There'll be no charges for anybody in, in Patreon in June. So really, the, the, if you join now, you've got like three days. You're welcome to if you want to, but recommend coming back. Do you not realise we're still doing content next week? No, we are next week. Okay, um, I'm just checking. The end of the month is on the, is on the Wednesday, James. They're only going to pay for two days. It's all good. Um, but you do get access to the back catalogue of all of the content. Yeah, and you can see produced. my planner, which is now empty. Yeah, uh, a spreadsheet with no cells <laughs> coloured in on there. Uh, the Slack channels, they're yeah. still there. The uh, cricket one will probably get a lot busier if you're a fan of other sports. Uh, there's plenty of people in there chatting away as well. You're welcome to join. Um, just know that June is free. Other than that, Enjoy the rest of the, the day. Stay I've got safe. A couple of Go shout on. outs if I can first. Yes, just do them. Obviously, big thanks for to Paul and Fergie joining us today. Thank you for everybody who's guested on the pod this week, uh, this year. Sorry, when so just disappeared for a little while, which includes both the gentlemen sitting on my right. Um, shout out to FF Stuff. I think we both heavily yes. rely Legend. on his website Legend. massively for Sky, and obviously Mr. Ian Parrin as well. Yes, uh, for his assistance with his own panel for you guys as well. Fantastic. Stay safe, look after yourselves. Thanks again, gents, and uh, chaff now. Thanks, everyone. Cue music, please, man, child.